Toy Story 5 should be about Woody reuniting with Sid. Yes, 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 yes! The movie opens with Bonnie, a little older and at an age where she's no longer playing with her toys anymore. This puts the toys on edge. What if we're donated to a bad kid? What if we're sent back to the toddler's room at Sunnyside? I don't think my plastic exterior can handle much more of a hit. Well, we do have another option. Buzz suggests that they give adventuring a try, live like Woody and Bo Peep to see what that's like. The toys agree and with help from Trixie, message Woody to let them know their intentions. Adventure it out there! Woody, Bo Peep and the rest of the crew are having a great time rescuing toys from carnivals. They've become legends amongst the circuit. Everyone knows who they are. Legend, wait for it. But Peep reads the message from Trixie and replies with their next location. Luckily for Bonnie's toys, that location is not far from where they live. But when I say it's not far from where they live, it's not far for a person with a car to drive. A toy, on the other hand, would take a little longer. Luckily, some of these toys have had driving experience, so that's exactly what they do. Life is a Over at the carnival, there's a moment where the toys have to drop to avoid being seen by people. But as Woody and Bo Peep are lying next to each other on the grass with their eyes blinded by the sun, a figure blocks the central body of the solar system. The person looks at the two toys with intrigue and picks Woody up. The person stares at Woody in his hands as a voice calls out, Thanks again, Sid. This triggers a memory for Bo Peep, remembering that Sid was Andy's old next door neighbor. I mean, unless it's a completely different Sid, but spoiler alert, it's not. It's the same Sid from the first Toy Story movie. Cool. Woody is taken away by Sid before his carnival pals can save him. As Sid's car is leaving, Bonnie's parents' car is arriving. Only it's not Bonnie's parents who are driving. It's Buzz Lightyear and the other toys. The reunion is not as spectacular as Buzz and Jesse assumed it would be, as they're immediately notified of Woody's situation. Everyone freaks out, remembering the type of kid that Sid was. All of a sudden, it becomes a rescue mission. Buzz Lightyear to the rescue! As Sid is driving, Woody's in the passenger seat, terrified, but still, following rule one of being a toy. The car stops and Woody is taken inside Sid's house, fearful that he's about to become one of those mutated toys. We can sense that Woody is expecting something dark, gloomy, empty pizza boxes lying around, probably darts in the wall with a board drawn on in spray paint. But it's none of those things. It's clean, bright, simple, not a toy inside. But then again, that's not uncommon for psychopaths. Woody's head is spinning. Again, not literally, he still hasn't moved. Sid places Woody on the table, then sits in front of him. There's a silent beep before Sid shyly says, Hi Woody. Hello there. Cut back to the other toys where Trixie is searching the internet for anyone whose name is Sid. Luckily for her, there's only one person in the whole world with that name, so he's the first result. I'm just kidding, they have to put in a whole bunch of keywords before they find the one they're looking for. They come across a site called Sid's Art, which Bo Peep recognizes as having the same logo as what was on Sid's shirt when he took Woody. The toys are able to use this information on the website to find Sid's location. Here we come. At Sid's location, Sid is trying to get Woody to talk, but Woody is staying mute. Suddenly, Sid starts to open up. Ever since that day I've been in therapy, it's this thing people go where they talk about their feelings when they had some kind of trauma in their life. They obviously all think I'm crazy. I mean, they don't say that directly, but they at least imply it. I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't know that you or any toy could come to life. If I did, I would have treated you better. I'm sorry. Sid is looking down in a depressive state when Woody says, I'm sorry too. Sid looks up as Woody repeats himself to reassure Sid that he's not gone insane. For the first time in the Toy Story series, we explore people and toys interacting in a conversational way. What were you doing at the carnival? Me? What were you doing at the carnival? Rescuing toys. <laughs> Not much has changed with you then. I was selling artwork. That's what I do. Here, look. Sid shows Woody one of his pieces. Wow, this is really good, Sid. Thanks. Here, you'll like this one. Sid directs Woody over to a near-complete canvas. The artwork is of a family, two parents, and a newborn child. Andy? Yep. Andy's a father? That's right, this is for them. If you like, I can give you back to him when I drop off the artwork. When Gwen's old enough, you can be her toy. Woody likes the idea, but wants to bring along the rest of the gang. Speaking of which, let's find out what they're up to. That's a great idea. Bonnie's toys are on their journey to find Woody when they come across a junkyard. According to the map, it would be quicker for them to go through the yard than around. So that's exactly what they do. However, in doing so, the toys are stopped by a familiar voice. Hello, Space Ranger. The toys turn back to be reunited with Lutso and his new crew of intimidating toys. They round up Buzz and his friends, ready to enact his evil plan. But we'll come back to that in a moment. But I want it now! 
Meanwhile, Woody's helping Sid finish off Andy's artwork. Only doing a little bit though, because after all, Woody isn't the artist Sid is. Woody talks about all the adventures he and his friends have been on over the years. Oh, and there was this time this pink teddy bear tried to kill us because he wasn't loved? So where are your friends? If I know them, they'd be out looking for me right now. So they could be close. Well, the artwork is done, so should we drive around to see if we can find them? Woody agrees, so guess what? That's what they do. What happens next? Sid drives past the junkyard where Woody notices the other toys tied up to a pole. Stop, there they are. Sid stops the car and they get out, just as Lotso is driving a truck directly towards the toys. Woody's not here to rescue you now, but I am. Sid removes the restraints, allowing the toys to escape just before the truck crashes into the pole. The toys reunite with Woody before he introduces them to Sid and explains his situation. It's a lovely moment. Sid then goes over to the truck and opens the door to see Lotso lying in the driver's seat, not moving. Just to clarify, he's alive, but he's doing the toy thing because there's a person around. It's okay, my name's Sid. Lotso slowly moves up to face Sid. You know, I'd love to have someone around to talk with while I paint. Lotso's smile returns for the first time in a while, knowing he finally has someone in his life that will love him. Sid's car pulls up to Andy's house. Andy opens the front door where Sid hands him his artwork, then his old toys. It's a lovely reunion and it's made even nicer when Andy's wife Hannah and child joins them at the door. Hey sis. What? Are you telling me that Andy married Sid's sister? Bingo. Scrabble. The Toy Story saga has come full circle. How does it end? The movie ends with Sid painting a picture of, get this, clouds on a blue background. Talking and laughing with his new pal Lutzo, Sid has closure and his confidence is back in his life. While at Andy and Hannah's house, Andy sets up the toys in their child's room, ready to one day be played with. Oh, and you're never going to believe what's painted on the child's walls. It's those clouds again. Then as the credits roll, You've Got a Friend in Me plays. We've already done a few versions of this, including Spanish and Michael Bublé, so maybe a high tempo rock version or ask what Dua Lipa can do with it. Or it could be sung by a bunch of movie characters. You've got a friend in me. You've got a uh, friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead. And you're miles and miles from your nice warm bath. Just remember what your no power said, boy. You've got a friend. Me. Yeah. You've got a friend. Me. You got troubles. I've got two. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together and see it through. Cause you got a friend in me. Some other folks might be a little bit smarter. Ow. Bigger and stronger too. Maybe. But none of them will ever love you the way I do. It's me and you, boy. And, and the years go by. Our friendship will never die. You're gonna see. It's our destiny. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. Yeah. Anyway, let me know what time you want me to come in, Pixar, so we can discuss this further. What do you want Toy Story 5 to be about?